Okay, in the so, whole process. so there, are, there are three, I think you identified three different uh, effects. You know, I want to get into what the effects are of these crop circles, man-made or not man made or whatever. I mean, you've noticed electrostatic effects, crystalline effects. Um, there were other, other kinds of anomalous effects that happened. In, within water, I heard studies that the, they've influenced water in a certain way. It influences the crops in a certain way. It may influence human behavior. Tell us a little bit about what you discovered in terms of the effects of crop circles. Well, this is the real interesting part of it. It seems like it's acting. Quantum, I'm sorry. Quantum was the other one. The quantum. Yeah. Effect. It seems like what we're getting there is very consistent with our ideas about high temperature superconductivity, metamaterials, and other types of exotic properties of materials that material scientists are actually experiment experimenting with right now to create new types of electronics and so forth. Mm -hmm. And what you get in some of those situations is the same things we've seen in crop circles. And I can't say it's exactly the same process, but if you read about superconductivity and so-called Cooper pairs of electrons, kind of exotic states of matter, where the resistance goes away and, and, and metal has the ability to conduct electricity 10 times better than it does right now with no heat loss, you get occasional electrons going off doing what's called quantum tunneling. And in one article I read, it causes batteries to fail. And here we're seeing batteries. I don't know if it's the same cause, but it's certainly one possibility. So there are different types of resonance. This is actually what it's called in the literature with the way materials are shaped. Now, usually it's with materials that at an anometer scale look like this basket that's right in front of us right here, where it's a, called a fishnet uh, sort of design. It can trap light. It can trap different types of energy. It, a crystal, it can transform energy into different shapes. There's a type of material that can create invisibility and it does it through something called negative refraction. But all of these properties are basically a function of either what's called the fishnet effect or the woodpile effect. Basically, lots of stacking repetitive pattern over and over again. Now, what do we see in a crop circle? A repetitive pattern over and over again, interwoven wheat, it's all pointing in the same direction. You're getting some sort of repetitive uh, microstructure over and over again. That could be why we're getting some sort of frequency shift there. But the basic idea is that the circle itself is acting kind of like a liquid crystal. You know, when you look at a field of wheat, it looks like solid material. But when you start bending it, it's almost like a fluid, and it acts like a liquid crystal because it's all the all the grains are stalks are pointing in the same direction. Okay, but what what effect is it actually having? I mean, uh, you know, like what are we talking about in terms of does it help the crops grow better? Does it? Uh, it's different, and you know, here's the thing. You know, our minds want it to be a certain effect, and if we can just figure it out, what we find is that the effects vary from circle to circle. Some circles seem to make the wheat germinate faster. Some circles seem to make the wheat, when it's been tested, germinate slower. We had uh, a seed laboratory look at a couple hundred seeds from a crop circle that we had been testing, and they found that there were differences between those seeds and the seeds from outside the formation. Differences but in well, genetic, dif some genetic. genetic differences and differences sometimes in growth rate, germination rates. Hmm. And so we don't know why it's different from circle to circle, but there do seem to be effects. Um, there sometimes seem to be effects on the soil and uh, certainly on the wheat itself. What kind of effects on the soil? In some cases, you know, if you look at the crystallinity of the soil, it's increased. We found this, uh, this was found in, in Utah in a circle. And uh, uh, soil scientists looked at this and said there's no way that this could be man-made because the soil looks like it's been heated to several thousand degrees Fahrenheit and it's caused a crystallinity, I don't know if it's in the silicon or other minerals that are in the soil. But there's a kind of a fusion going on there that you find from high temperatures that you only see when you bake the soil in an oven. Mm. And yet, when I looked at that circle, I said, it's got to be man-made. This looks just like a man-made circle to me. It, it, there's mistakes where you expect the mistakes. Uh, doesn't diminish my interest in it, but it looked to me. But there, this, is, this is the thing. The man-made circles are creating these weird crystalline effects that even top-notch scientists are saying, this had to be created by something anomalous because there's something going on here that's not in the, the soil outside of the circle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so this is what's so interesting about it. You're getting very exotic effects. You're getting people making these from subconscious sort of direction. And something's happening there that no one can explain. You know, someone we know went to Mallory Battery Factory, which I believe makes uh, Duracell in Connecticut. And they said the only thing they knew that could wipe out their batteries was... Uh, uh, nuclear radiation, ionizing radiation. And uh, uh, we haven't found that much. It's very rare that you go into a circle with a Geiger counter and anything happens. And 
last summer, for example, I went around with a Gauss meter. It detects electromagnetic uh, sort of fields, the type you go around your house to make sure you're not sleeping next right. to a high field or something, or power lines and so forth. Right. There was no EMF activity in any of the circles that I tested over 10. I mean, it was zero as zero can be. So it's not a conventional energy field if our results are correct. It's something different. It's just not conventional energy. But you notice it's, electrostatic differences. Or you we do get a little electrostatic changes between the outer field and the inner field. Uh -huh. it, you walk in there, as soon as you go in, you see the static meter start to move around. But it doesn't do this in, outside in the field. So there's, there's like a, an electrostatic uh, signature in the area where the circle is. All the wheat is pushed down you know, in the circle like we saw in some of the pictures. Uh, and so there's a difference in the spacing between the standing stalk and the, the wheat that's out. And that kind of creates an impression on the electrostatic field. It's not generating static electricity. I haven't actually... But the stalks are kind of bent too, aren't they? Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, they're, they're bent. And, um, and that's another thing that's been seen, by the way. Some cases you see, you look at the stalks and there are these kind of expulsions mm -hmm. in the nodes where the wheat bends. Nodes. But of course, this can be seen outside in the field too. So it might be a property of just the, the wheat in general. There, I gotta tell you, there's been some sloppy research sometimes. People have found the blown nodes in some of the crop circles. We found it in the circles we've made too. And in fact, if you go in most wheat fields, you're going to find blown nodes. So there's a so kind again, of selective not, perception. Not, People can focus too much sure. on what they want to see. We're not really finding any difference here between uh, the ones that we know for sure are man-made and the ones that we don't think were man-made. I don't think there's a litmus test, Joe. No, originally we thought we had it with the right. electrostatic meter. Right. We tested a bunch of circles. What and some we other stuff? What were some other things that you were testing too? Because there, there were other, other indicators that you thought might distinguish the two types of circles. Well, you know, people have reported different uh, sort of a burnt type effect on some of the wheat in some of them. I've never seen that myself. Um, people I know have said they've seen that. In Isn't some there of a microwave thing or something? Or well, no. Thought there had to be some real people high thought high. if you had these exploded nodes that it had to be uh, microwave energy. Now, of course, if you do put your wheat in a microwave oven and turn it on, it will yeah, do that. But that doesn't mean way. that that's the only cause. Now, I talked to a, a guy from Texas State once when I was at a conference in Texas or stopping through there and I just we happened to be talking and I asked him uh, since he said he worked in agriculture and he said they had an experiment down at Texas State to see if they could find an alternative to pesticides using a microwave device and they hooked one behind a tractor and dragged it across the lawn to see if they could kind of kill the weeds or maybe trim the grass but he said it just killed the grass permanently and they okay. said it's not going to work so I'm not sure if you had that radiation from a microwave, why it would discriminate from one, you know, just the nodes to the plant. He said that all the plants just died, but they were had it right on top. So, but on the other hand, if you read the literature, what you'll find is that microwaves are associated sometimes with balls of light. Oh, interesting. With something called uh, Rydberg electrons, and they can kind of act like a group, and the microwave can kind of affect the way they oscillate and cause kind of mm -hmm. light to be emitted and so forth. So maybe there's a connection there, or maybe it's not the way people thought. I think there's been a little too much simplistic research in this. One thing we found, Joe, is that it doesn't fit into any of the ideas we have about what it should be. Right. Every year we went back with a different theory, uh -huh. and it was disproved. Yeah. If you think it's yeah. all man-made, yeah. there's some that will show up that are not man-made. And if you think it's all made by ETs, I've got some friends I'd like you to meet at the <laughs> pub later on after we're done. So well, and maybe it doesn't really It's matter. a paradigm maybe buster. Maybe it doesn't matter. No, it does. It's a paradigm buster. That's the point. This is not fitting into our 3D reality. Right. You, we, we've been talking about this now for about half an hour. We've been trying to get to the heart of it. Yeah. And if I could tell you in one sentence what the heart of it was, I would. But the point is, it doesn't fit into the mental boxes that any of us have. And that's the real point. It's making us expand what we believe is capable and possible. You wouldn't think that if you just talk, took uh, stalks of wheat and arranged them in a pattern that anything's going to happen. But it does. And that means there's more to nature and energy than, than, we've, than we know about. And it might not be a surprise to indigenous peoples or peoples thousands of years ago that worked very closely with the land. It might be like, but a, to zen, us it is. like a zen koan, you know, like that's, that's the effect it has on us. It, it, uh, it helps us to get beyond our rational yeah. mind. That's good. Just like remote viewing does and just like all sure. this other stuff does.